My name is Alvin Jones, and uh, I am the saxophonist and flute player with the wonderful group Crack It Out. Rupert Ojiji Harvey, um, rhythm guitar player and background vocals. Um, also later on, lead vocalist and uh, one of the founders of Messenger. So the name Crack of Dawn, how did we get the name? We used to rehearse, we're very disciplined for young guys in those days and oftentimes we'd uh, rehearse all through the night and I remember one morning we came at a rehearsal and the sun was just coming up. I remember standing in front of um, Abe's place and just looking up at the sky, well, wow it's beautiful, it's like the Crack of Dawn. And then somebody said, hey, Crack of Dawn, that's, a, that's got a ring to it. We should call the band Crack of Dawn. And that's how the name came up. Yeah, that's how the name came up. Well, actually, we haven't had a, a reunion for a number of years now. In fact, it's been since, what, 1985. We did one at the uh, Blue Note. It was supposed to be a, a one-week engagement. And it turned out to be much longer than that. Um, the people, actually, that, that were playing before us were Junior Walker and the All-Stars. And we did so well, they said, can you guys do another week for us? But we had, I mean, the whole idea behind this is just, we're just doing it for fun. Uh, it, it's unfortunate it took another, what, how many years? <laughs> 27 years? My God. We're luck lucky thing, we come from, uh, I guess, a lot of long livers. Eh? So my, my aunt was like 110. So we think we got lots of time. But I think maybe this time we might uh, make a little bit more of it. It's been a real pleasure getting back together with the fellows after all these years and um, we've been having a lot of laughs and a lot of memories and uh, some old habits also die hard we realize but we're working on it. Mark Smith and myself are two of the founding members of Crack of Dawn and we were just a bunch of teenagers hanging out together and just jamming and uh, playing at like Club Jamaica, backing up artists when they came into town. But um, the thing is, we had a real, um, I'd, I'd say, pretty well-rounded musical background. We were coming up with a lot of R&B, jazz, funk was very influential. So um, we just started kind of just jamming and hanging out together and it became more and more serious over time. I think at some point you met Trevor from playing with the Cougars. That's right. And I think you might have incorporated Mark in there somewhere and then I sort of was incorporated in the Cougars somewhere, so, it, so we had enough people to, to start a group with a full horn section, rhythm section and so on, and we decided, you know, like, uh, why don't we start up something and see where, see where it goes. This guy, um, Abraham Black, <laughs> was his nickname, but his real name is Grant Gabriel. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, so uh, he wanted to, um, to manage us because he wanted a group to back up his sister, <laughs> Jackie Gabriel. <laughs> So he said, well, guys, okay, you know, you, you know, you guys would be great. Mac, I'll, I'll take care of this. You can practice at my place. We're just young punks. We said, okay, we're great, sure. Got a place to practice. Sounds good to me. So anyway, so that's essentially how it started. After, uh, after that little era, we decided that uh, we should um, maybe sort of go out on our own. And, and uh, we, Rupert's brother came in, Carl, on uh, lead. And we also got Glenn Ricketts, uh, who came in after. And it was around that time after we were rehearsing now at a place called Mason's Music on Oakwood in Eglinton uh, that um, somebody came along and said, you know guys, there's um, Columbia Records is looking for Canadian talent and so on and so forth. So uh, we ran into this one guy, his name was Shane Bennett. And uh, he said, you know guys, I, I think you guys have the, what they're looking for. Why don't I bring this guy down, one of the producers, and uh, maybe sit in on your rehearsal and uh, see what he thinks. Well, he brought down Bob Gallo from Columbia Records and Bob Gallo had produced a lot Otis, of people, Otis, Otis, Redding. Otis Redding and a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, uh, other, other people out there. His uh, numerous accolades and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, so Bob came in and he said, wow, you, got, you guys sound pretty, this is what we're looking for. <laughs> so it all started from there essentially. And um, uh, Bob liked us so much that he immediately said, yeah, we're gonna do a contract with you guys. Uh, so he took us in and we did a demo at, what was that little place on, uh, it was right at Davenport and, uh, yeah, I remember that place. Davenport and St. George, little four, four track studio there. <laughs> so we did our first demo there and uh, they, they, they loved it and uh, that's how it all basically started. By signing a contract with Columbia at the time, we entered into the history books as the first um, black R&B band in Canada to be signed to a major record label. So. 
you know, I think it's one of my joyous accomplishments in the music industry, you know, that we came along at a certain time, everything was perfect, the stars were aligned the right way, and, you know, now we're listed in the encyclopedia of pop music, and so on and so on. And it's a really, really great um, experience. It's been a great experience, and of course, when we were younger, we certainly enjoyed traveling all across Canada. We played at all the major venues. Nathan Phillips Square, and I think we were one of the largest draws in Ontario Place right, when we when we played there in Place des Arts in Montreal. We did some stuff with Cool and the Gang and CNA. With CNA. Tour nationally, anyways. So it was uh, it was good. It was good while it lasted. It was exciting. We had a lot of fun. And then, of course, uh, with the recording industry, the way it was, uh, you know, certain people decided they wanted to go in different directions. <laughs> And which is exactly what happened. Of course, Rupert went into Messenger. Uh, I, tr I tried a little thing in the recording world with a, a record company for a while. In fact, we helped uh, do your, one of your albums, right? Under Version Records with Frank Rosso <laughs> and so on. After Crack Dawn, like um, Alvin said, we, we still maintained our friendship, which is probably the most important thing to all of us. We, you know, we still know to cuss each other and still laugh about it. But uh, musically, everyone went to different directions. The sad part to me was the, the time when Crackadown broke up. But just at that time, we were contacted by Bob Marley's manager. Um, and he wanted to handle us to actually go on a tour of Europe with Bob, opening up for Bob. And that time in our part that uh, Glenn Ricketts decided to go off on his own and stayed with the record label, the rest of us just, um, for us, it was all about brotherhood and unity. And once a label got involved, they started to try to tear the band apart. Want to take this person here, that person over that side. And we just, you know, it was pretty sad. It was, a, it was sad, the parting. But the good part of it is that to this day, every single person in that band are still buddies.